Boom, we are live, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to a linked up on LinkedIn. Red TV, Peter Clark with you today. And uh, thank you for joining us, uh, everybody on LinkedIn. We're also broadcasting on Facebook and YouTube. But of course, LinkedIn is our priority here because, of course, we're linked up on LinkedIn. That's what we're doing here. Uh, so today I'm pretty, I'm really pumped. I'm pumped. I'm always pumped. But I love talking about travel. Um, I made... Uh, and for some people that don't know me uh, that well, the reason why I love travel so much is because that's how I cut my chops when it came, uh, came to creating content, uh, video editing and traveling around. I made travel videos, you know, and I traveled with uh, with companies like WestJet and Air Canada and Transat and Zoom. It goes all the way back to Zoom. I don't know if anyone remembers that brand, but there you go, Zoom. And uh, so uh, I love travel because that's, that's what I uh, cut my chops doing. Uh, travel videos and so on. So I love travel. So today I get the great pleasure to meet someone that I really don't know that well, but I guess we're new friends now. And uh, this, this guy um, is legend apparently in the travel industry, 40 years, owner operator, uh, just a, a huge boutique uh, a company here in Canada. We'll get into all of that. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce my new, new good friend, Rocky Racco. How are you? Hey, Peter. I'm great. Thank you. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. I love the jacket. Love the look. You're like a rock star. Listen, right off the top, right off the top, I got to tell you a secret here. Listen, I got to tell you a secret. If I had a name like yours, if I had a name like yours, you'd be like... <laughs> I mean, come on. You, 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 are, you, are, you are hilarious. <laughs> right? But, so thank, thank you for that. And also, thank you for... Uh, Branding, Branding me as a legend. legend. Now I have now to, I have to uh, put up with all my colleagues uh, <laughs> giving me the gears. Oh, they're going to give me the gears. Oh, they'll give you the gears. Oh, yeah. They're going to say, oh, I, now he believes it. He, now he believes it. As oh, well. Listen, I, I've always believed in what my mother had to say. So now the rest of the world is catching up. <laughs> well, it, 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 and that's a great segue into, you know, who you are and what you do. I mean, uh, you know, your company, uh, TT, TTI Canada, um, it's a family business it's been around for, it started like 50 years ago. I mean, again, great history. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it been passed on to you and so on. Let's, let's just start right there. I mean, uh, first of all, we want everyone to reach out to you on LinkedIn, um, and make sure that they can connect with you. So let me put up your profile there. So that's where people can connect with you and learn more about, uh, yourself and connect with you if they want to take in that direction. Let's talk about TTI travel. Um, you know, premier boutique travel company. Talk about, if you can, just share with me who people don't know you uh, in the industry or people who are watching this a little bit, know a little bit about travel, uh, a little bit about yourself, you know, the background of that company. I mean, it's rich 50 years um, and kind of like what you do now in the company. So if you can start with that, that'd be great. Sure. So, so again, thank you for uh, taking this initiative to, to promote uh, travel. Uh, it, it's, it's something that's obviously needed now. And uh, we in the travel agency sincerely appreciate uh, what you're doing. In, re in regards to TTI Travel, it's actually a business, as you mentioned, started over 50 years ago by, um, by my mom. Um, we were on a trip uh, in Europe. And during our trip, she became dissatisfied with some of the arrangements made by the travel agency. And then she, when we got back to Canada, she convinced my dad, who at the time was a successful real estate broker, managing the Italian community, buying homes, in the new country. Um, and there was a lot of travel between, you know, Italy and back and forth to Canada as, as immigration was, was taking shape. And my mother said, I, I think we can do better than the arrangements that, that we were subject to. And uh, next thing you know, we had the travel agency established within the walls of the real estate office. Uh, then my mom, who believe it or not, you know, was a grade three educated person, self-educated herself, learned how to speak English, read, and actually became a notary public, all on her own volition. Um, and then we became like a one-stop shop for the uh, community. Um, then when my brother and I, from the time we were little kids, if you asked us what we were going to be, my parents instilled in us to be lawyers. They wanted us to have a professional designation. Sure, so sure. my brother became actually a successful lawyer. And, and myself, while I was amongst my peers at, in university, I looked around and said, while wow, these guys are way more focused and dedicated in this profession than I am, uh, they're much more studious. And, and I realized that I'm really more of a people connecting type of a person. Sure. Uh, and at the time we had 
you know, this, the, the base of a travel agency. So right. I basically told my parents I'm coming into the travel business and much to their chagrin because they were convinced that I should be pursuing something a little bit more idyllic from their perspective. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, that's, that's, we, that's old school, old world. They, they want to the be, have that, that designation, right? The lawyer. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, so it happens that now a lot of our clients happen to be lawyers. A lot of my, my <laughs> peers and a lot of my people that I hang out with and play squash with are lawyers. And my brother, as I mentioned, was a successful lawyer. So yeah. I definitely got a good taste of, of people. Actually, my daughter, my oldest daughter has become a lawyer. So I'm surrounded with lawyers, but wow, it, it, was, it wasn't my calling for sure. Right, um, right. And then it uh, calling. it's funny you say that it is a calling, isn't it? You feel that yeah. as well. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, you know, the, the, to represent yeah. the law, there's there's vocations and there's occupations, and vocations are exactly. that's one of them. Yeah, I just heard I just heard recently that if you do something you enjoy, you're never going to work. You're actually not going to work. So I, I thought that kind of summed it up. Um, uh, travel is definitely a great career. And then when I jumped in, um, knew knew some folks, but knew very little about the business, uh, and had a lot of time on my on my hands. So I actually started to travel to all the destinations in the Caribbean and Mexico and Europe, South America. Um, I have to admit, selfishly, it was for my own personal benefit and joy. Sure. Um, but it ultimately gave me firsthand experience to all these places all over the world. Um, and 40 years ago, it wasn't something a lot of travel people did uh, travel. So um, it gave me a bit of a a leg up in when I was communicating to my clients and, and, and referrals, I was able to really give them a firsthand perspective on the destination. And then while I'm traveling, I'm also meeting people in all these different places, That's which right. therefore when I send clients, they're getting a, a you know, a better, better level of service, uh, better accountability and, 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 and on and on. And so started sending folks around and then like any business, um, if you're doing it right, you get, High, high amount of repeat business, but more importantly, referral business. So referral business. a lot of people were referring me. Uh, and then one person who we took care of her personal travel experience referred me to her, her corporation, which at the time happened to be Citibank. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm handling the, the travel arrangements for a very established you know, financial institution. Um, and then they went out to bids back then, 40 years ago, the first uh, remnants of consolidation. And I went against all the big guys, the American Express. And at the time, it wow. was uh, P. Loss and it became Carlson and Ryder. That's now HRG. That's now American Express and, and a few others. And there's this little travel agency. Back then, we were called Dufferin Travel, located in the Dufferin St. Clair community. Of right. Know that area. Toronto. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and we bid the business. And because of our high level of personalized service, we actually won. And so the big boys going, who is this little travel agency <laughs> right. that ended up with this large account? And so that established us. And then what happened was people from Citibank went on to Merrill Lynch, which uh, you may have recalled was a boutique um, yes. uh, um, financial Back planning then, company. Yes. There's much, and then yeah. they, they morphed into Merrill Lynch. So then we ended up with the Merrill Lynch business. Somebody went to Credit Suisse. We picked up the Credit Suisse business. Somebody went to Deutsche Bank. We picked up the Deutsche Bank business. And then we were handling Boston Consulting, Monitor. So next thing you know, we had all this blue chip, uh, you know, corporate business. What was interesting when folks would come up from New York, from Manhattan to see their key Canadian clients, they come to see TTI because we were handling a lot of the blue chip financial institutions. They thought they'd see almost like a reservation, a massive reservation center. We were only like 18, 20 folks by then. Um, but but we were able to kind of provide that high level of personalized service, as I mentioned. That that's always been our one of our strongest pillars. Um, and then and then from there, someone introduced me at one point to the honeymoon market um, and went to the bridal shows. Showed up with barely nothing in hand. Didn't realize I had to de you know, decorate my booth and all that stuff. But again, <laughs> good you know good angels following me. Uh, the the folks at the show set me up at the right booth. Made sure the booth looked good. Next thing you know, it, just being there and communicating with people, and again, letting people know that we had firsthand experience in all these destinations. Right. Then we started booking honeymoons. We actually, I, I actually established a division called Just Honeymoons, which was a real front runner again 35 years ago. And and since then, that's what we're talking of, about. We're talking about yeah. 30 
yeah when you start years ago, exactly. and putting the foundation and the anchor to this thing i mean we're talking like back then yeah. to come up with specialty concepts yeah, and ideas. exactly exactly very rare yeah. right that was different then and, and what was interesting through this ordeal is then also the notion of discounting when there was some operators coming around and saying 10 percent off packages 10 percent off this 10 percent off that and we full service travel agencies we felt very threatened by that and we are figuring we're going to give you all this information and then you're going to take our information, walk down the street and go and buy it through a discount outlet. So right. I literally came up with this notion to charge a $25 consultation fee. And it wasn't much, but it was quite bold at the time. And now, you know, sure. in retrospect, it was way ahead of its time. Um, but what happened, Peter, was by charging the $25, People took me way more serious. They says, wow, if you're prepared to ask for money just to have the conversation, you must have something really of value to say. And next thing you know, it really cemented our relationship. And then all of a sudden, once they, it, it, again, $25 compared to the five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 they were going to spend on their honeymoon was nothing, but it was just that initial buy-in. Um, then they, they they would be very open and they start saying, well, here's what we know about this. Here's what someone such and such told us. Sure. So then it became what we now call the collaborative effort because you know we're going to do business together. Sure. Very and so let's all yeah, put all the cards on the table. So together we figure out, you know, what your needs are, what, you, what, what your thought process is, and then we can share what the destination is and what you can do in the destination. So it became a, a really interesting conversation. But That's so... Cool. Then we got into the honeymoon business um, and then someone else approached me uh, that there was a, in one of Canada's premier travel companies, it's called Butterfield and Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, they are preeminent in cycling and walking trips all over the world. Their head office is based in Toronto. They were looking for a travel company to help uh, provide seamless service to their clients. So when people book one of their were cycling trips, they wanted uh, a travel agency to provide the air the transfers, the pre-accommodations, the rest of that. So they went out to bid, and then we we won the bid because of our you know very uh, good relationships in the predominantly in the airline business at that time. Sure. Um, and so then we were introduced to the high and luxury travel side of the business. Um, and and being our ninety percent of their business is U.S. U.S. based, um, and they really cater to the real uber wealthy in in America. Mm. Um, and so we really learned and, and sharpened our, our knife on, 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 a, on a very important segment of the marketplace. So through there, That's we joined the anchor of your business now, though, right? I mean, if exactly. we and exactly. and I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to cut you off. No, 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 no. The growth of your business was organic at best. And like you said, charging exactly. 25 bucks 35 years ago, 25 yeah, yeah, yeah. bucks is a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, now, now we're more into the 250 to $750, you know. Conversations, right. stage. Rightly so, yeah. but rightly yeah. so. I mean, like, this, you mentioned it earlier about yourself traveling around. You said, "Well, um, I kind of did it, uh, you know, for myself and learned." But, but, the, but the, what comes from that is you—you you have this hands-on experience. Yeah. That that is valuable, and it is valuable to, and that's the whole point of sometimes reaching out. Not sometimes. That's the point of reaching out to a travel agent who's actually been somewhere who can say to you, "Hey, I recommend this, and this is why." Why have you been there? Yes, I have. It's a big difference. So for you to be able to say, well, that was different back then. I just think you had the foresight to say, well, I can leverage that, charge for that, and yeah. get commitment from people to uh, take your company seriously. That's just, and, that's great business. That's yeah, great thank business. you. And, and we've actually leveraged that quite a bit. We really promote uh, our team to travel as much as possible. Well, right. we're providing the right support and right backup to encourage them to travel. We actually even create a travel bank. So part of their compensation, part of the reward program reward financial reward is to actually get travel credit dollars because we really want people to, to get out there go through the airports go to the destinations you know test basically test drive and so what's happened is we have a team of, of 80 of us across the country okay. and it, it, there's probably not too many places that one of us hasn't been to recently and if we haven't personally been there we're so well connected that we actually know people on destination that right. can help us really refine the travel trip experience. That's and that's ultimately what really makes us different in the marketplace. That's fantastic. No, I, I love that. And like you said, you, you, you're pulling from a core of like 80 people that have literally thousands of hours of travel experience and, and dedicated their lives to, you know, researching, looking into things, uh, 
connecting with people or from around the world. That's really, really important. And again, again, that's, that's part of this conversation about time to travel is that, you know, the industry right now in 2020 obviously is, has been decimated. Uh, and we need to remind ourselves a, about the passion uh, of traveling and the love of travel, which is why people are getting it, why people got into it to start with. So when you reach out to someone in your company, they're passionate, they love what they do, um, and they're experienced and, and so on. But let me let me bridge that real quick here, if you sure, can, sure. because I mean, we are here in 2020 and part of this conversation really needs to find its way uh, just, just more open. Uh, I want to always preface, preface this conversation by saying to everybody, we're certainly aware of what's going on with COVID. Um, we understand the severity of that and uh, of this, of our whole situation and that the people are sick and, and people have lost lives. No disrespect to that. That's not what we're having this conversation for. We're having it in conjunction with what we're doing today. Sure. Um, so it's really reminding us that. So let me just jump, uh, talk to you about that COVID specifically, um, you know, from March until now, um, just, just kind of a broad overview of how much uh, this situation has impacted your business, whether it's statistics with numbers or, I mean, I know the overall industry is probably around 90 to 95% down, but talk, talk to us about your company specifically, how this has affected you. Gladly. Actually, the impact of COVID really impacted travel as far back as January, because when, when uh, Hong Kong and Asia first communicated that there was a COVID scenario, uh, clients that we had actually booked to go to China or, or booked to go to Hong Kong or using Hong Kong as a connecting airport to other parts in, in the Pacific or Asia or, or whatever, those, a lot of those routes got canceled by, by the air carriers. So we, we had to do a lot of rearranging just to get people uh, moving away from those arrangements that were no longer accessible. So we just thought that it was isolated here. This was then the next phase, as we recall, around the February time frame, is right. when Europe started locking down. Right. Once Europe locked down, that was a, definitely a larger part of, of most of our businesses in North America are okay. very much connected to personal travel or business travel to Europe. So then that really substantially changed our, our, our business. Right. And, and, and then, then Canada the Canadian government justifiably, as you mentioned earlier, there's no doubt that we want the Canadian government is, is you know, they're getting 80% approval on what they're doing. And we fully support that, you know, people's lives, people's health always, always has to be front and center and Absolutely. extremely important. So everything we're talking about is, is yeah. taking that into consideration, as you mentioned. Yeah. So when things lock, then the Canadian government locked down and then they were signaling that they're going to close the borders uh, and only allowing Canadian travel, Canadian citizens coming back or people with family. And, and, the rest. and so we now were under so much pressure, the whole travel agency community in North America, in Canada, I was speaking from a Canadian perspective, but similarly sure. that was happening in the U.S. We were so under so much pressure to get all of our travelers back home safely. And it was a jigsaw puzzle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some airports were opening, some flights were being canceled, some were being rerouted. Um, right. Some airlines stopped, other airlines picked up. They, they went from maybe five flights a day to one flight a day to once a week. So it was an, a constant moving target, kind of similar to what was happening, much larger scale. But when the ash cloud hit uh, way back in, in, in you know, several years ago, yeah, right, when, right. when it kept moving around Europe, it yes. wasn't a straightforward solution. It just every day you woke up. And you right. have to deal with different circumstances. As the wind blew. As the wind blew. Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Well done, Peter. <laughs> so so now, and, and, and I have to say, and I, and I have to give a shout out to all of my, my colleagues. And, and not only are the frontline colleagues that were, you know, really dealing with the travelers and doing an amazing job to stay in touch and, and really applying the highest level of duty of care to get our folks back, but our travel partners Airlines, hotels, tour operators, ground handlers, everybody was collaborating with each other at a, in, in a pace and in a, in a way I've never experienced. So that was definitely one of those silver linings to see that when, real, when, when the chips were down, the whole travel industry, the whole community, the whole ecosystem really bonded together because yeah. we, we knew we had a common goal, get people back home safely. And yeah. that was really important. And so a lot of the terms and conditions that were in place, a lot of them became much more relaxed because right, of course. we're dealing with. And, and, and so 
Um, but one thing, I, and, and, and I understand why, but I have to say that the traveling public, including the government, never really gave the travel agency community kudos for all that hard work we did to get people back safely. Whenever there was, you know, SARS or 9-11 or, as I mentioned, the ash cloud, we got we we received public raving reviews. But in this particular instance, we didn't get much public sentiment. And I and I realized that, why. Because I, I, re- I remember that. I agree with you yeah. on that, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it was because people saw travelers as the conduit to spreading the COVID. And right. so they're saying, well, it's the travelers that are coming back and forth and bouncing off each other that are, that are causing this, this pandemic. So it was right. kind of a catch-22. Yes, thank you for looking after us. But B, the fact that you're actually promoting or looking after travelers, they're the ones who are causing right. the right. scenario that we're in. So sure. I, I, get, I get the, the, the psychological dynamics of that. Um, and, and and I'm fine with that, but there's no doubt that that the value that the trusted travel advisor now provides in the travel in the in the, in the travel space yes. is extremely high value and very and, and very sought out. So our clients really appreciate what we did for them, and they know that going forward, they actually make they make need to make sure that they're being guided by folks that are well connected that have that have the relationships with key suppliers yes. and when these kinds of things happen that it's just not going to be you know easy breezy it's going to happen because coming out of this it, it is going to be a very you know hodgepodge recovery one yes. step forward two steps back and as the saying goes so yes. there's no doubt that 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 it's not going to be easy for the next 12 to 24 months for sure the other thing is the other silver lining is our travel partners, again, the airlines, the hotels, the, the cruise lines, sure. they really realized that we really stepped up and yeah. really had that relationship with our clients to really bridge the gap between, you know, getting them back, getting them back safely, taking sure. care of their future travel credits, understanding the financial consequences, potentially, you know, planning their next trip, staying in touch with our clients. And a lot of these, a lot of these operators, including the, the ones that are very online and very people touchless. Um, those those folks that were in a touchless environment, they really felt stuck because right. they had no one. It, it, you can't talk to a computer and get you out of a, a jam like what <laughs> right? COVID, COVID's presented. So so the, our travel partners now value us more. Our clients value us more. Um, that's all great news. But the, the reality is we're currently under a lot of travel restrictions, as we know. Yeah. And therefore... Absolutely. Uh, we're all down 95. Would you to say 95%? For, so, and, I, and I'm not Absolutely. looking for the exact numbers, but it, you're, you're, you're similar to what the industry is experiencing. Absolutely. And, 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 and you can take that number from Air Canada. Air Canada is down 95%. Air right. Canada is a real uh, bellwether for the industry at large. And, and WestJet will tell you the same thing. So just yes. from an airline perspective, once yes. they're down 95%, you can generally say across the board. Yeah. So speaking of that, by the way, I just want to give a quick shout out here to uh, w- one of your partners here. Speaking of uh, Air Canada, Jamie Fox here, TTI Travel, a circle of excellence agency with Air Canada. There you go. A great yes. partner together. We will go further. So thank you, Jamie, for putting that up. And uh, I know that you guys have a good relationship there. So I appreciate uh, you mentioning that as well. Hey, let's jump to something that's really, really um, uh, something that I'm passionate about because uh, all of the negativity of everything in the world, just in general, I mean, sure. COVID, just it, it, there's just an energy out there right now. That, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. It's, it's, you it's, noticed? it's bizarro. It's bizarro. <laughs> right. Parallel universe. But one of the things that I, I, I love about these conversations is that I, I always want to get back to the essence of what we, you know, what we're talking about here, which is travel and the, and the, and the love and the passion of travel uh, and why it's such an important um thing to do uh, just in general for as a as a species and you know for me I, I talk about the idea that when we start shutting down you know borders and airlines and travel you don't shut down just the economy you shut down hearts and minds and souls there's lots of reasons why we should be uh, traveling so let's talk about the importance of traveling let me pose that question to you why is travel important uh, why is it important more than even ever now Rocky that's a that's a great question and let me preface before I, I say what i'm saying just to give you kind of context when i was 10 years old grade three um 
I had maybe been on a plane twice in my life at that mm-hmm. stage. Um, when my daughters, I have three daughters, and, and in their grade three class, they actually invite the parent to talk about their vocation, their their, their, their job, and, and their industry they're in. So I went to talk about travel. And my first question to these three grade three-year-olds was, have you ever been on a plane? Peter, it didn't, not even within a half a second, all the hands were flying up. And I was astounded to realize, I mean, I am in a fairly uh, affluent community, but to see the enthusiasm of how many of these kids been on planes. And then I started asking, why, you know, why were you on a plane? And they gave me the whole plethora of reasons. Uh, I was out, I was traveling with my 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 parents on on my my dad's business trip. We went to see grandparents. Uh, we went to you know see the Eiffel Tower. Uh, we took a cruise together, a family vacation, a full generation gathering, um, incentive trip. They they knew everything, <laughs> yeah. and, and their experience with travel compared to what what ours was thirty four years ago. Right. So travel is really in our lifeblood. It, it travel isn't something for the rich and famous anymore. Everybody travels, and either from an economic perspective because you have to conduct business, you have to connect with clients, you have to connect with your internal resource team, you have to go to you know the the, the mineral mines, the the forest areas, um, you have to you know and, and and the internet and and the Zoom. By the way, even though people are saying it's going to curtail travel, actually. I'm a believer that it's going to actually foster and promote more travel because now your product, your services, your wares can be promoted on a much larger scale. And 100%. so, yes, you're going to promote yourself on a Zoom call or on, on a conversation the way we're having it. But sooner or later, that human connection has to take shape. And there are cultures out there, the Asian culture, for example, it's known that they will not start doing business with you unless they've had five to 10 touch points with you. Like it's, and then once they build that trust and that trust is not done or, you know, through an electronic means, it really has to be done having the conversation, breaking bread together, yes. spending time together, getting to know each other. And, and we know that even though you can have these zoom calls and zoom meetings, yeah. it's, it's after the bit, it's after that one hour, half hour business call or that conference meeting you went to it's the conversations that happen at the cocktail lounge, at the reception, uh, meeting up for breakfast, hanging out by the pool, going for a walk together, finding that you have this mutual passion about whatever. Whatever. That totally. human connection. So, yes. so what is travel, Peter? Simply, it's the human connection. It's our lifeblood to each other. And 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 so we say here, we actually within TTI, we actually have a weekly town hall to keep my team connected of, of what's happening um, with all the changes going on and, and, and from that perspective, but also it's an opportunity to stay connected because let's face it, everybody's at home now. Um, so just to have that, but we always end up with a human connection and, and the power of the human connection is it's everything from our perspective. It's absolutely everything. I love it. That is so, I just love that answer. And, and, you know, as you can see behind me, I mean, I play music and I can tell you in my travels, um, the connection point that you can have with, with people through, um, not, not just culture and language, but music and food. And like you talked about those hidden passions, you know, all of a sudden it's like, Hey, I didn't know how much I enjoyed you know, wine or uh, whiskey or uh, scuba diving or whatever it is, uh, it just it shows itself because you're 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 making that human connection. I always reminded people uh, when they ask me about you know favorite places to travel, they say, "Oh, you recorded all these different videos and and you travel places. Tell me where you would go." And I would always lean towards stories of these human connection points that I had. And I, and I would openly say to him, I said, I don't remember the buffet. I mean, I don't remember the buffet. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember. You, you might remember one great, you know, a la carte restaurant or something, but sure, you sure, always sure. remember the guy or gal that's in the, um, you know, in the, in the lobby bar who recognizes, and says, Hey, Rocco, Hey, Rocky, Hey, Peter. Uh, hey, and they pour you up your favorite drink. How was your day? And you, you remember that. So the human sure. connection is what I'm getting at. Hey, let's, let's talk to those travelers right now. Let's talk to, um, the public in general right now and let's use this platform for yourself 
Um, again, we're not trying to pontificate here about it for everyone to, to, to forget what's going on and just start traveling. We know that there's protocols and so on, but what can we say to the traveling public? Let, let's throw that out for you to answer. If you had a message to the, to the traveling public right now, um, what would it be? Well, let's, let's, uh, let's divide them up in two groups, if I may. One is the, the business traveler. Um, so the, the business traveler, because of the government uh, restrictions and, and uh, is their you know, uh, statement that essential travel only, and, and corporations have to be you know, responsible to their, to, their, to their company employees. So yes. because of these, these restrictions, business travel, are, businesses are not traveling. Right. Um, sometimes people, within Canada, people are traveling because, again, within Canada, you can travel with other restrictions. Um, but the other side of business travel is a lot of people aren't going back. They're not back into their normal office environment. So a lot of people that would meet in an office environment, if someone's not going to be in their office, that that's not going to happen. So right. um, what, what we've done for the business traveler, we've always had duty of care. We've always been able to know where our travelers are from the time they get on a flight to the time they get to the hotel to the time they're on destination. And we actually have a whole uh, systems and processes in place. Peter, we've actually taken that to an even a, a different level, a better level, where we now actually, through the government gives us a feed on any flights that potentially had COVID passengers on flights or, or, or cruise sailings. We take that information and we, and we, we, put it through our systems, and then we're able to proactively determine if any of our clients were on those potential flights right. that, that detected COVID. So then we can reach out to them and say, by the way, maybe you need to go and do some testing. If, if you were going to do it, if you weren't, but maybe we strongly suggest you do. So so there's a lot of those kinds of tools in place. And so the duty of care is, is going to be that much more important. And again, we, yes. we're keeping in touch with our corporate clients and our corporate travelers, um, when they're ready to travel and, and restrictions are lifted, we're going to have a lot of additional safeguards in place to make right. sure that wherever they go, that, that they're going to be comfortable with it. The other side of that is that we are, as I mentioned to you, part of our town halls with our team. And again, I know that a lot of travel agencies are doing this ac across the board. Um, we're actually meeting with our teams to make sure that we're, we're kept up to, to speed. What are the airlines doing specifically? What are they cruise lines, what are the hotels, what are the car rental, um, what are the transfer companies, all those, all the se segments of the travel experience, we, we actually uh, become aware of their processes. The great thing is because there's so many global brands. So for example, a brand like Fairmont, if Fairmont is going to enter into um, COVID protocol and safety and hygiene, they're going to do this on a on a global basis, as would Marriott, as would Four Seasons, as would the Ritz Carlton's, as would all the global brands. So the good thing about that is it's not a hodgepodge solution. They they are implementing these things across the board. So therefore, with confidence, we know what a brand is doing, and therefore we can uh, correctly advise our, our our clients what to expect and 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 what not to expect. So that's on the corporate side. Yeah. On the leisure side. There's no doubt that there is a huge pent up demand to yeah. travel. Again, back to what we were saying. Um, and so what, what, what we've actually did, realizing that, that to go out, out of country right now, the restriction is you have to do a 14 day quarantine coming back into the country. Yeah. Most people don't have the luxury of that, that time to go out, out and come back and, and quarantine themselves. So within Canada, they travel. So we're, we're looking at travel opportunities within, within country within province, within, right. within city. And so, um, so, and what we say is we're, we're using that opportunity to kind of, it, it actually has two benefits. One, Canada is a fabulous country uh, from coast to coast. Right. And right. there are incredible experiences that we can have right in our own backyard. And sometimes right. we, we kind of forget about that because the, yes. the world is full of, fascinating places and sure. and destinations and experiences but we got a wonderful backyard and and we know that because anybody who visits Canada thinks highly of us in, in so many different ways Always. so we've now become much more um, informed about what local travel opportunities are for example even myself as you know 
Last long weekend, I was fortunate enough to, to spend time at Mont Tremblant in, in a, in a town home. All the COVID protocols were in place. Uh, we, we brought our own food. We could go dining out and about, but it was, it wasn't conducive of that in this environment. We had the most fabulous Thanksgiving dinner with my three daughters, my wife, two of their boyfriends, and one of them, the dog. It was, it was a made in heaven Thanksgiving. Fantastic. Um, and, and then a, a few weeks back, my wife and I, we got in a car and we went to Alora. Um, last, last year I realized we went to Prince Edward County and did that whole, that whole, uh, wine experience, theater, oh. art galleries, awesome. all kinds of this stuff to do. And, and a lot of folks from the Toronto area, and I know where you are in Calgary, I mean, within an hour and a half, two hours, you're in God's country. You, right. there's so much. And then Vancouver and then Victoria, then Montreal and all, across the, and then the Atlantic provinces. Yes. They have a few more restrictions in place, right. but again, uh, we we keep in touch the northwest territories i was yes, gonna say the north i mean i i've never i don't know about you but i that yes. is a place i gotta put on i mean yes. i've never been up into like none of it uh, can you believe that, that? And I'm, exactly my yeah that is on my top bucket list for sure 100 for sure. all the provinces except the territory i haven't been to right I, one thing I, I, a huge shout out to the indigenous community did you see the commercials that they have on 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 uh, TV? Amazing. I love it, love uh, it, love it. That's why I maybe that's why it's stuck in my head because I see these and I'm like, why yeah. have I not been there? Yeah. I mean, if you if you look at these commercial, just to your point, yeah. these commercials, uh, I know one of the airlines is it Canadian North? Is it uh, Canadian North? Is one of the uh, airlines? I'm just trying probably to feed. Probably. Know. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I, I can't answer that unless I know it succinctly. So I'll, all I'll right. Hold. Oh, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but my, my point is when you see these, uh, if it was anywhere else in the world, you go, Oh, I got to go there. And, and yeah. be, for some reason, because it's in your backyard, you go, uh, I'll get to that. I don't know what it is. You mentioned the East coast. I'll give you an example. I grew up in the East coast and, um, I always remind people, uh, you know, if you want to go to Scotland, Ireland, that kind of feel, but not leave Canada, man, go, go down to Newfoundland. Are you, have you ever been to, Peter, you go to Newfoundland on George street? Peter, Peter, I never knew our, our Newfie friends. They are more Irish than the Irish. That's me. <laughs> they're, they're, That's they, fly, me. they fly the Irish flag more than I've seen it when I was in Ireland. Right. And, and their culture and their character and their food and their music. So what I say, Peter, along those lines is when the, when the, when the, the folks from the UK left and they landed in East coast, Canada, they must have thought that they did a circle trip and landed back where they came from <laughs> because <laughs> the topography, the climate, everything is identical. I, that's <laughs> why I keep telling people like when you, when I, I travel to, uh, when I, when I travel to Ireland, um, I went there because, well, like, like you mentioned, I mean, my, my liver's Irish, so I can bathe in Guinness. So I had to go to, <laughs> so, you know, but when I was traveling around, I didn't go thinking I would see something different from the East coast to just to be frank no. with you. I went because of yeah. the culture, the people, the yes. connection part, but to your point of, of the things that you can see and experience right here in our country. Oh, that's fabulous. unbelievable. Unbelievable. So no, I, I appreciate it. No, I, so, so, so I'm just going to throw this one liner at you. I want, I, sure. So, are you, do you think it's time to travel? Do, I mean, do you think the public should in, actually or um, who can just leisurely travel? There, there, yeah, there, there's there's three three we 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 constantly are trying to stay abreast of, of our clients' mindset, and so we we survey them or we look at other folks' surveys. Uh, there's three things that are holding people back from travel. One is the the 14 day uh, quarantine restriction on the way back. Two is that the government has essential travel only. So therefore, when you're traveling abroad and you can't get the proper medical coverage, people aren't comfortable with that. And three is the unpredictability of the destination that they're going to. Is yeah. that, are they going to have to be subject to quarantine on, on the destination or while they were there, are there going to be restrictions imposed on them? So right. those are the three major barriers of why people are kind of hesitating right now. Yeah. Um, but if if people are looking for a long term stay, um, there are definitely places in the Caribbean, in Eastern right. Europe, in Asia, in different parts of South America, and basically all over the world. There are pockets with extreme low levels of of COVID, low levels of of of, of all of that 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 we again are keeping in in tune with. And therefore, it shouldn't just be a, a blanket statement that you can't yeah. go traveling. You can get somewhere safely and be at a particular destination and feel comfortable 
and again, these are destinations that typically you wouldn't, they wouldn't be on your top bucket list, but maybe things that have moved up in that direction. Right. So there are definitely uh, great opportunities out there. And I'll tell you one thing, Peter, um, the rest of the world, they're other than unfortunately our friends south of the border are really doing a great job of obeying all the COVID protocols uh, mostly. Yeah. And so now is really a great time to travel because to go to these places like Piazza San Marco and, and downtown London and Buenos Aires, the streets are quiet. Even, even New York is quiet. So you really, <laughs> actually, this is kind of going against the grain. Right now is probably a great time to visit places if you really don't want to be you know, immersed amongst the crowds. They're not there. And, and now you have to wear a mask. You have to be a little bit more cautious, but sure. you know what? You have to, again. Each individual has to weigh the pros and the cons. Um, I, I personally have no problem, and 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 as soon as there's an opportunity, I will definitely get on a plane. I did I did fly for business reasons to Calgary, as I mentioned to you. I've already taken a lot of local driving trips, um, but I have no hesitation going somewhere. But the 14 day quarantine, that's the one that's holding me up. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, next time you come to Calgary, let me know, would you? <laughs> no, with, we all know. That taco whiskey, with all that taco whiskey. We got a sure. lot to talk. Hey, listen, we got a lot to talk about with whiskey. I want to throw up a comment here. <laughs> we definitely do. Uh, I want to throw up a comment here that I, I much appreciate uh, again from our good friend uh, Jamie uh, Fox because we're, again, we're talking about traveling and should I, shouldn't I, uh, backyard, should I try to get on a plane, go places, all of the things that you said. Uh, Rocky is so true, but what Jamie says here, more important than ever, uh, everyone should be booking with a trusted travel advisor and let them handle the complexities. You just talked about how you, you are constantly updating your team on the levels of just all the information. The information is so overwhelming, not just yeah. from governments and local, but you know, a, a, as you said, all your partners and so on. Uh, yeah. So they have the inside connections. This is what Jamie's talking about to all the suppliers. Um, you, you are really on your own without a travel professional. And it's so true. I mean, we're not, it's not about, uh, it's not a fear factor thing, everybody, but what it is, mm -hmm. you want somebody who really understands, has yeah. the experience, has to know with all, uh, know with all, to be able to make a phone call here, an email there that can probably save you not only money, but time and, and the stress of all of this. We say peace of mind and carefree. Right. That, those are invaluable. Those are invaluable. 100%. And, and so, so you have someone like Jamie, Jamie works for, I think it's fair to say, a fairly large organization. I've heard of them. And, and, and for, exactly, Air Canada. <laughs> and for Jamie to realize the value what a trusted travel advisor brings, and we have an amazing partnership with Jamie. We have an amazing partnership with Air Canada. Uh, and, and when everything is going great, it's sure. easy breezy. Easy but breezy. let's face it. <laughs> There's going to be wrinkles along the way and some and some major obstacles. We have that relationship with the Jamies of the world, and he's a yeah. wonderful resource person. And we ask him and, and we ask him in such a way that, you know, if we're going to get a yes or a no or, or let me look into it, at least we're going to get a human a human consideration in what really is important. And so yeah. having an, an organization the size of Air Canada that has that human willing that that human connection to the travel agent advisor community it is immensely valuable. Now, of course, not to say that if you're not uh, you know, super elite, elite, you know, Air Canada and and the rest of the airlines and hotels, those sure. loyalty branded programs. Yes, you definitely have special privileges, but we actually leverage those those relationships. You know, uh, as much as you know, some of our clients we we have over sixty clients, Peter. Mm -hmm. Families that, that spend over a hundred thousand dollars in travel per year. Okay? Wow. So a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm a I, I travel a lot." I, it's all a relative term. But it is relative. Uh, if you're spending over a hundred thousand dollars a year in traveling, yes, you have relationships. But you know, our our turnover is eighty million dollars in sales. We belong to Virtuoso that does third that is connected to thirty billion dollars in the luxury resource in luxury. Wow. We belong to BCD Travel. That does over thirty billion, thirty million dollars, thirty million dollars a year. Um, sorry, thirty billion dollars a year in the corporate arena. I think we have some leverage when things yes. go wrong. When you and, have to make a phone call now, again, yeah. can we always get a, an affirmative answer? Absolutely not. But will we give you the reason why? Or and, 
and can we go to bat for you? Absolutely. But Absolutely. also having that trusted relationship, what, what we've come to realize that is the most important role we play is the follow-up of when you come back from your experience. So then we learn what went well, what didn't go well, what yep. You tickled your fancy, what you want to avoid. We build up what we say is we get to know our clients intimately in a very yeah. subtle, sophisticated way. It's not only about the destinations and the modes of travel. It's getting to know you, getting to know them, getting to know their hot buttons. And, and so that's really the, the art of a successful travel advisor is, yeah. is having that intimate relationship to really know how to make a trip even better than you would have imagined. Well, so, yeah, you know what Peter likes. You, I mean, you reach out yeah. to me and you say, yeah. you know, well, you already know what buttons right there. You say, hey, we'll talk about yeah. whiskey. Like, okay, you bring me to Dublin. Yeah. You bring me to Dublin and look out. We're, we're going to have a conversation. So, hey, let's, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun with Rocky. Again, I want to remind everybody, Rocky Racco has been in this business for what, 40 years. Your, your family started this company. I love that story with your mom, by the way. Grade three. Are you kidding me? I mean, that is a pure entrepreneur spirit. I love that. So that's obviously in your bones. But if I had a name like Rocky, we're going to get to know Rocky more. <laughs> I mean, if I had a name like that, that would be playing I everywhere I go. You know, as people know, if my head's big enough. I don't think I, I don't think it'll be fitting through any too many doors these days. Uh, no, not, <laughs> listen, it's all fun. We're just having lots of fun. So let's get to know sure. Rocky. Um, uh, I, I I love this part of this show where I do a little thing called this or that, and this is the travel edition of this or that. So okay. basically, I'll just throw in a couple things at you, and I just want you to pick one. So it's not it's no rocket science, but it gets us uh, a little deeper inside the mind. Yeah, Rocky Racco. So let's let's find out a little bit more about my good friend here. So let's start with an easy one here: wine tour or whiskey tour? Yeah, and and I have to admit, before we go down this path, I've I've, that, I've cheated a little bit. I kind of know some of the interviews you've had previous to oh, me. That, that's why, and, yeah, and, yeah, and I know you're good for both. But, so, here, <laughs> so here's how. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You're you're you're, you're great entertainment and, and with a great cause. It's a couple things. One, I love whiskey. I, I love scotch. I love having a cigar. Um, it's so contemplative. Having a conversation uh, while having a beverage like that, and, and it, it's one of my most favorite pastimes. So absolutely, I'm into any whiskey tour for sure. But the wine, my roots are Italian, uh, as yours are Irish. Um, I, well, my, I, liver is, my liver is Irish. And, and so you could imagine that probably wine runs through my veins. Um, the, the other amazing wonderful thing about when you're on a wine tour is it really pairs itself extremely well with quality of food and food, food experiences so uh, food actually is the number one uh, stimulator of travel that's what people actually are focused more about when you I, when you talk about their trips as much as the conversation and the people you met which is absolutely top of mind but food is way up there so I agree when you're in a wine region you have to you you would think that you're also in a very culinary a uh, foody, foody experience for sure. Totally. So, so oh, again, oh, oh, whiskey oh. first though, whiskey <laughs> kind of just a hangout. So, but I mean, if, if you grew up Italian, I'm just going to say that, I mean, you had that on the table for breakfast for God's sake. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. That, yeah, you just had that at lunchtime. That's just something you had. I mean, actually now in, in COVID, we, we might be having a little bit more than we need to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, no judgment here. No, no, no judgment here. How about this one? And, and I'm glad you watched uh, some of the other shows because yeah. the fun part of asking the same question, by the way, is that it's, yeah. it's just a great comparison to see what some sure. people are thinking and so on. So let's go to the next one. River cruise in Europe or ocean cruise? in the Mediterranean? River cruise, uh, hands down. Um, uh, my wife and I, uh, we've had the uh, opportunity of having two other river cruises. Actually, we were supposed to be on a, a Budapest to Bucharest river cruise last March that literally oh. got canceled two weeks prior to departure. Is right. rescheduled for this March of 2021. Hopefully, hey. you know, things will settle down. But I'm not doing anything. We, just, we've had personal experiences on a river cruise, and the intimacy um, of that a river cruise provides the the ability to, you know, visit local ports that are right in the city centers, in the in in the most you know unique yeah. sites. Um, that culinary experience, the wine experience, the camaraderie, um, you know, vessels from 150. Less, it I know, it's absolutely. Intimate, right? 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I got, I, I've never been on one. So I, I, I can, re- I, I can totally relate to what you're saying. I mean, you pull up to a, on, on the river, uh, you, you, you port or dock, if you will, you go on a little, uh, a bike uh, tour, uh, drop into a restaurant or a pub, have a, have the local cuisine or whatever, get back on and Oh, totally, totally. Hey, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's, we can talk. Keep going. Let me get, so here's an interesting thing about the river cruise. You don't have any anxiety about missing getting back on. Because literally, Peter, you can either, like you said, get on your bike, get a cab, and and pedal down, pedal down the bank, and you'll beat the river cruise down. You'll be at the next <laughs> destination before they get there. Believe me, it's it's so That's true. You can always run across it, or run across, or, or sorry, along the river, and just say, you know, hey, I'll see you down. <laughs> see you and you wave, you wave at, at you wave at your comrades as you're as you're rolling along. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Hey, let's try the next one here. Hot air sure. balloon ride or a helicopter tour? Um, I've never been on a hot air, but I've been on helicopters. I love helicopters. Be- I just, I love speed. I love, I love the movement. Yeah. I love how they can, the proximity of the, where they can get to. Right. Um, top of a volcano. Um, I actually did one of those Hawaii Five O. Uh, we were, we had a film crew with us in, in the film, in the jazz festival in St. Lucia that I had coordinated several years ago. And we were in a helicopter with a videographer zooming along the coastline. It, it was just a fabulous experience. And so, uh, being wealthy would be would be fun and and brings a lot of benefits. But having your own private helicopter, right? I mean, that's that's, that's to me that's, the that's ultimate. <laughs> that's yeah, the ultimate. Oh, hey, I totally relate to that. And by the way, I, I, just to so I can totally relate to what you just said uh when i first went out and again was doing travel videos and so on one of my first experiences of being in a helicopter was shooting in uh, Kauai, and uh, kind of like the area oh, where the perfect. Jurassic park and stuff they took the doors off the side literally i strapped myself in i'm hanging out the side with my camera yeah. and i'll tell you it's so unbelievably it's thrilling so liberating which brings you to the next one uh sky jumping <laughs> Oh no, no, it's you're totally <laughs> cheating on this. I'm totally cheating on this. Okay, how about this one? How about swim with sharks or bungee jump? Um I'm gonna give you my own personal take. I, I'm a bit sensitive to the folks that want to swim with the eels and swim with the shark. Mm-hmm. I'm a more of a naturalist and, and I think Fair let let these let these species do really their do their own thing in not an artificial captive environment for the benefit of folks. But anyway, you wanted to get to know Rocky Racco. That's a Rocky Racco. No, no. Hey, there's no sentiment. I'm on the record there's no you. right or wrong. There's no, um, I'm the, on the record with you on that, by the way. When I say, when I say, by the way, swim with sharks, I, I mean literally, you know, where they do cage diving. Yeah, 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 exactly. You don't want to be swimming with the sharks if there's no cages around. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what's the counterpart to swimming with the sharks? The other one or, or bungee jump. Um, I I would love to go bungee jumping, but with with a group of folks that I know. So when we do this, we all hold hands and jump. <laughs> and and uh, we'll, so are you scared we'll, of heights? Are you scared of heights? Uh, no, no. But I I, I I a bit of us. I love speed. I love heights. I, I I love motion. But you know what? As you get older, um, you got to get more sensitive to these things. Well, you like living I, too. <laughs> I love living. I mean, the, statistically, bungee jumping, you probably got a great chance, but. Again, I'm not just going to go bungee jumping. To, I don't have it on my bucket list, but if there was a group of folks and they and we were at a destination and they said, hey, let's go bungee jumping, I, I'm good. I'm, oh, I'm good for new adventures. All right, fantastic. How about this one? Pizza in Italy or sushi in Japan? Um, as I mentioned earlier, between blood in my veins, I, I probably have a lot of pizza in my soul. So... <laughs> I've had pizza in Rome many times and in all over Italy. And, and I guess pizza is one of those international, you know, oh, opportunities. So I absolutely love, love, love pizza, but sushi in, in Tokyo at the fish market, uh, when they bring in the fresh, fresh catch would be top of my bucket list. I, I have been to Japan. I have been to Tokyo, but I never got a chance to see the fish market and, uh, and the sushi in, in Japan is Exquisite. Wow. Okay. Exquisite. Exquisite. Okay. I and I would and the Japanese culture, it right. really is a culture that will change your perspective on on life. Um the, the folks in Japan, when they get up in the morning, most of them they get up to how can I please someone else? 
How can I look after? It really is inbred in their culture. Um, the the examples of of the friendliness and the hospitality. Can I tell you a story? Yeah, Just go ahead. Sure. So, so on our last night in Tokyo, when my colleague and I, we want to have a, a, a dinner on our own away from the group. And so we asked the concierge and they, you know, in, in, in Tokyo, a lot, a lot of places, they don't speak English. And, and the signs, there's very little English speak, English signs. So he wrote out where we need to go on a map. We get in the cab and it's absolutely pouring cats and dogs. Yeah. We get in the map, we show, we, we get in the cab, we show the, 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 the driver the map. He brings us there, he drops us off. And we start walking towards what we think we're going in the right direction. Absolutely lost. Walk into a little ladies' clothing between these two ladies, young ladies, young 20s. As soon as we walk in, one of them courteously, you know, spontaneously comes up to us and he's, how can I help you? And we point at the map. She literally, Peter, goes to the back, gets an umbrella, walks out of the store and starts walking, meandering with us along the streets to make sure that we got to the destination. But it was like 10 minutes together and it's pouring rain. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. <laughs> like you yeah, got to get back to where you like, I can't, could you imagine in North America, if I walked into a, a place and we came across a couple of young girls and I said, they say, after they gave me a, the look, <laughs> because again, I have three daughters and I know that look. They're uh, like, yeah, I'm and, sure you're and, lost, buddy. <laughs> and, and the last thing they're going to do is, is is step outside in the pouring rain to accommodate right. a, a, an absolute stranger. Anyway, the lady, finally, I, I convinced her that she has to go back. We're still not there. I walk into a, a, a local restaurant. As soon as we walk in, the place is bustling busy. The sir, the first server that sees us runs over, you know, with how can I help you? Show the sign. She gets an umbrella, walks out, walks us around the block. And now we're inside the restaurant. And I'm thinking, Really? I mean, wow. to, to absolute strangers, to just make that their their most important thing. And then when I came back I, for another time, boy, what a contrast to when you land in North America. Right. And you got, and you got the folks at the airport giving you that look like, really? You think I'm going to help you? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you that, I, like you said, for me personally, uh, I, uh, as an empath, I'm very empathetic. So I have this uh, uh, softness that I had to get, had to accept in my life. Uh, but I get overwhelmed when people are super kind like that. And when you travel, that's exactly what happens. People will yeah. go so far out of their way to help a complete stranger that it's overwhelming sometimes emotionally. So I, I appreciate that story. That's fantastic. Hey, let's get through the, uh, so a couple more of these here. Skydive. Oh, no, we did the skydive. Dive. Skydive or scuba dive? Which would you do? Oh, right. Oh, uh, I've scuba dived. I absolutely love scuba diving. As you know, when you're down there, time elapses right. so quickly because you're you're amazed at, at, at all the beauty and the wonderment down there. Yeah. Um, I've never skydived. And, okay. and again, one of those things, even beyond bungee jump, if, I, if, if the right group of people said, let's get on a plane and let's go skydive, I would love to try that experience. And a, a travel colleague of mine actually – Video, videoed his experience, and it is really, <laughs> really, you really a stretch. It's, right. it's it's not for the faint of heart. But I, I'm with the right people around me. I'm, I'm prepared to do a skydive. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. How about this one here? Great Barrier Reef or the Great Wall of China? Great Barrier Reef. Um, the the natural beauty, the opportunity to do a scuba in that environment, um, and I've actually had three different trips planned to Australia. And within weeks of the de of the departure, they all got canceled for. So I've never landed on Australia. It's a huge uh, part of the world. So I'd love to knock off the Great Barrier Reef and and really take in Australia and take in New Zealand. Uh, and really get to know that destination firsthand. Sure. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I've been there once, but it's unbelievable. Talk about that another day. How about this one? I love this one. How about touring Havana in a '57 Chevy, or being on the autobahn in a Porsche? Um, I, I, I have fast cars, but I'll have to tell you, Havana is one of my most favorite destinations, bar none, bar on none. this whole planet. That's me. It, it is still locked into the or, or, or origin. And to be in a car, and there's three types of those, those cars. I, I categorize them in three categories. The car that is at the side of the road getting fixed. Right. The car that is at side of the road is no hope of getting fixed. <laughs> and the car that is really beaming and shining and has and has you inside it touring around, it is 
absolutely fabulous. It and fabulous. and the people in Havana are so welcoming, so full of life. They truly appreciate visitors. They really truly appreciate the day, the moment, the music, the culture. Um, it, it's an era. It's a throwback. I just absolutely love it. I can, I, uh, I I would go to Havana any with a drop of a hat. And, now, and, I, love wearing, and I love wearing the fedora. And remember, I love cigars. Cigars yeah. and fedora. Well, I was just going to say. A premium Cuban rum. Right. Premium Cuban cigar. Come on. And, and you know what? You can get in one of those rambling cars. And when I see them, Peter, I, 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 I get goosebumps. They Absolutely. Are. Listen, I, I, I knew we got along for a reason. I'm going to tell you. So earlier I was saying when people ask me all the traveling that you did, they would ask me, where would you go? And I always talked about the experiences, but one, I didn't want to get into the intricacies of that. But now that you brought it up, I would always say to people, well, where's my favorite place? Old Havana, old Havana, down on the cobblestones, walking through those streets. Like you said, the people there are so, it's so safe. And I just literally said this two nights ago to my, to my wife, when we were talking about uh, safety, when you're traveling and so on yeah. and these kinds of things, you, it, the safest place you can travel I've experienced Ever yes, in, is Havana or in in Cuba? Why? Because yeah. of course, there's no there's no gangs running around. No. There's no no one has that stuff. They want and they want their tourism to be number one. So you can literally walk along the Esplanade two in the morning, uh, yeah. sit there with a with a bottle of wine. Nobody would. It, it's it, it's so many stories to tell, and it's, I know, right? All the and so many more, and so many more to enjoy. So more to do, more to do. We have more to do. How about this one? This is this is another one of my favorites as well. A day on Necker Island, which is of course the BDI, uh, with Richard Branson, or a day in Dublin with Bono. I, I know you're a huge Bono uh, fan and Irish roots, and and and, and good on you. But Richard Branson, I find him one of the most uh, unique, intriguing personalities on this planet um i'd love an opportunity to spend time with him and really understand what makes him tick um and and hopefully really get the straight up goods um yeah. what he what he's done and and you know you know he he's in the airline business with virgin galactic virgin uh, air and and sure. Gal virgin galactic so galactic, we actually yeah. sold five space travel trips to our company and those Come trips on. are 200 over two hundred thousand dollars per person. That's what I think. That's right. First, first flight, first space flight. Um, I, I wouldn't be the guy who would be lining up for one of those trips, but we actually have five clients that book that. Um, but he, he is he is a front runner. He's he's really unique. Um, I've been thinking about that of, of who I would really like to hang out with, and uh, and Necker Island. Wow, I, I've had the, the the pleasure of being in places. Uh, like Mystique, um, Young Island in in uh, the, the Leeward Islands, Windward Islands, but uh, Necker Island uh, that that would be. But I I, I would even would want to hang out with 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 Richard even in an Irish pub with Bono on stage playing music. <laughs> How does that grab you? <laughs> well, that grabs me. Okay, so I'm going to share you a secret. I'm going to share you a secret. And I'll edit this out later, but this is live right now. Secret right now. So first of all, I've spent five days on Necker Island with Richard Branson. Yeah, I saw I saw that. Uh, I didn't know it was five days, but, I, but and, I and it's funny. I was showing him something that I made. I made this magazine. I brought it to him. We were just chatting about it. And he's in the magazine, of course. Right. And there's a picture of Bono in there. And I said, I said, you know, I got to tell you, Richard, I, you know, I said, I got to tell you, I would just love to spend time with that guy. So, and he literally just looked at me and goes, yeah, yeah, no, he was here just a couple of days ago. And I was <laughs> like, there's your example, right? Can you imagine yeah. being on Necker Island yeah. and, and Richard and Bono are just bellied up to the bar and just chatting yeah. Having a glass yeah, of water. You, 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 you'd, you, you'd have to pinch yourself. <laughs> I would lose my mind. <laughs> hey, more importantly, Peter, yeah. they would actually say, we are with Peter Clark. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> hey, who, who let this guy in? The security. security. <laughs> hey, hey, we're with Peter Clark. Uh, yeah. Security. Security. He's the band. Just let him security. play. He's the band. <laughs> Cue the band. All right, finish this sentence. This is probably going to be an easy one for you, but uh, I, I know why I love it. And but finish this sentence for me. I'd love to hear your take on it. I love to travel because it it really connects the the human spirit, our souls, in, in our lifeblood. Love that. Fantastic. I love that. And you're right. It's the lifeblood. It's the connection. 
it's the human connection, the, the connection, the experience that we're having as human beings on this this uh, thing spinning around in, in the universe, and uh, it's it's just a, it's just a joy to remember that. It's a remember of why we connect as human beings and language, culture, art. Um, music, food, you talked about, you know, whiskey, wine, all these things. Uh, this is what travel does. It just makes us, I think it makes us better. Just makes us better people. You know, could could you better. imagine if we all sat in front of our TVs and in, in our, in our screens and, and saw the world through their lens? Right. <laughs> you, you would, right. You wouldn't want to, you, you wouldn't want to get out of bed after a while. You're I mean, uh, right. but on the other hand, when, when you travel, and it's your first hand experience and you go where you want to go and you talk to the folks that aren't being interviewed and spliced and diced in, in certain messaging, you, you, those are priceless. And, and it, and even it doesn't, you don't have to get on 12 hour flights and 20 hour flights and five hour flights. Sometimes even just getting in a car or getting on a bicycle and, and just going to the next little neighborhood Absolutely. or just meeting a, meeting a stranger and having a conversation um, it really opens up your mind. It, it, it really, it, it brings you a level of education and I, I'll end with this. So when my daughter was about 25 years old, my oldest daughter, she's very intellectual, very thoughtful. And I said, Natasha, you've been on this planet now for 25 years. What is it that, that resonates mostly with you? And she said, without a hesitation, Peter says, our family trips are the the time we were together on our family trips is what ultimately she she remembers and is the most important thing. So, again, wow. I didn't script her, um, and and so it is in our blood, it it is in our souls, and and it really matters to get out there and connect. And travel is is absolutely the best medium for all of that. Absolutely. Well, and you Peter are a champion. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm a huge shout out on behalf of the whole travel ecosystem. We love what you're doing. You're a great guy. Uh, I'm looking forward to growing our, our, our friendship together. And wow, we're going to have some good cigars and some cool places listening, some, some cool music. So cool. That, that's going to be fabulous. Uh, I super appreciate Super kind words. Appreciate that. And I just want to throw back at you the, the comment from your daughter from a, for a dad. That's a test. That's a testimonial for great parenting, my friend. That's what that is. <laughs> So uh, that's that that's kudos to you and, and your family. So uh, but gosh, that must have struck you right there. Good for you. Uh, it's a wonderful memory for your uh, for your daughter to share with you. Listen, Rock, uh, Rocky, this has been fantastic. Again, I got to just do it one more time because I just. <laughs> oh, I'm going to see if it's not Peter. Peter. It just doesn't Peter just doesn't do it. But come on. Hey. Rocky. If, if 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 I wasn't in this tightly wounded suit, I'd be out there jogging right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my friend, it's been a pleasure to uh, have this conversation with you. Thank I you. hope uh, people will uh, you know share it and and open up more conversations. I hope they reach out to you here on LinkedIn, find out a little bit more about your company, TTICanada.com, Everybody, um, and you know just 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 to have these conversations, just to have these conversations with all respect of everything that's happening. Um, we really need to be a voice for the uh, travel industry. And uh, Rocky, you've been doing that for 40 years. We appreciate it. Thank we you. We super dude. appreciate it. Okay, we'll see you again next time. Rocky, we'll do it again. And thanks everyone That's for cool. joining us. We'll see you next time, everybody. Take care of yourself and be kind out there, everyone. Be kind out there. Mm -hmm.